These are some nice looking horses. Palmerin of Lawnfall. Geralt of Rivia. Ha! Sit with us, Witcher. Found your message on a notice board. You see, Palmerin? I told you. The Griffin at White Orchard. I knew that were we only to follow the tracks of its slayer, we would in the end find Geralt. Milton de Peyrac Peyron and Palmer and de Lanfor. Good to see you both. Been years. Be assured, we share your joy. You must forgive us our, uh, surroundings. When we pledged to place the village under our protection, the village elder gave us this hut as our lodgings. He swore it is the best hut in the village. Get involved in some squabble? We discovered that in retreating, the Redanian garrison had left this land's tillers at the mercy of numerous plagues. The tyranny of bandits, the most onerous among them. These plunderers shall soon descend on this village to collect tribute. Milton and I will dissuade them. We are both sworn to fight injustice and oppression wherever they rear their heads. The matter does not concern you, of course, but do us the kindness of waiting. Once we have dealt with these marauders, we have a matter we must present to you. So, plan to go out and meet the bandits when they arrive? Fight them? Parmaron wishes first to appeal to their sense of decency. <laughs> but I expect they will be deaf to this. Yeah, completely. We must afford them a chance to stand down. Many a hardened outlaw has left the path of wrongdoing upon hearing words of admonition. Doesn't happen in these lands. Ever. If they do not heed my reprimand, we at least will know we have done all within our means to evade bloodshed. Fine. Naturally, I'll help when Palmerin's rhetoric falls on deaf ears. Excellent. Then we've but to wait for the rogues to arrive. These are coming! Hear that? Your bandits have arrived. Let us go out to greet them. <laughs> he mean us? I, Palmer and Delonfall, call upon you to repent. Search your hearts. Do you not see that they are blackened? <laughs> Regular punch and duty here. To prey upon commoners is no honor. To loot their meager stores, abandon the path of shame. And we will spare you. <laughs> right, good jest that. Had us a laugh. Now, fuck off before we lose our patience and you lose something else. Nay, hey, wait, Zorg. These lads are a lark. Mayhaps they know some tricks. Oi, players! Can you toss balls all loopity like? Or do that thing where one spits fire while the other farts. <laughs> Noble Palmerin's giving you a chance. Now I'm gonna give you some advice. Do what he says. Or what? Or you'll find yourself fighting knights errant in the pay of the Duchess of Toussaint. And they eat scum like you with their morning porridge. There's three of them. Two turtled up in armor. We'll come back later. Some wench sent them. 
folk who say we's a feared of witches and jesters. Ooh, insulted the Duchess. Not good. Indeed, we cannot let the affront go unpunished. I swear upon the Heron you will pay with your own blood! By the crane, villains, ready your arms! I was getting my signs mixed up. It's fine. It was entertaining. Shut up. <laughs> it's never entertaining when Geralt dies. Let's try this again. Not suck. The miniature was you got like between three of them. Yeah. And there just wasn't anywhere for you to go. And one of them had a big shield. But just you know, kill him. Yeah. I was trying to. I got surrounded. And then I died. Here we go. Oh, you got in my way, bud. I was gonna get him. Oh. Dang it! I'm not. I know. I was trying to get the guy down. Oh, there are archers too. Ah! Yeah, there are so many of them. Instead of bandits for terrorizing the town, I was expecting like six. Yeah, like six or eight, but not <laughs> 42. And we're only three guys. And you're not in plate mail. No, that's true. This is where you say, okay, you have offended me. Now you must die. When the time of the white frost comes, do not eat the yellow snow. You a goon. Come on, loading faster. Here we go.
Dang it, Archer! Where are you? He's like right behind me. There he is. I'm dead. I'm dead. I'm dead. Ah! So many people. So many. I got people shooting me from afar. I got people running up and sl slapping me. I got people pounding me with shields. Why can't I have a shield? Because you're a victor. Doesn't matter. You have two swords. I can only use one of them. This place is very unwieldy. <laughs> like, these are not swords you are designed to hold one-handed. No. Even though he does kind of, but... <laughs> You're a witcher. You fight monsters. Why would you need shields? That's a good point, but still. I mean, shields would still work against a lot of monsters. But if they got, like, you know, something that can destroy shields, like, you know, acid... Plus, my swordsmanship does not use, sh does not have shield. So, I wouldn't be spinning and flipping around so much. It wouldn't look as cool, yeah. Exactly. It wouldn't look cool. Do all witchers use swords? Yeah. Is no axe? Is no spear for poking big monsters? Okay, Sorry, we're yeah. archers. Dang it! Not good. Move it. Stop that! Right in your guts, Eddie! Ha! Nope. That's not you. Ow! Ow! I know. I'm trying to... Get... Get out, get out. Dang it! Get down. Oh, I hate that. That. that was a waste. <laughs> up, back up, back up. Dang it! I know, but still, I just did poo poo. There's so many bandits, you know? <laughs> what a way to start. Geralt of Rivia fights monsters single handedly. It's killed by random bandit number 42.
Stop that! Get out of the corner! Ah! Stop it! Oh, come on, archers! Okay, now I'm starting to get frustrated. Now I gotta wait for this loading screen again. You're gonna be my friend. Where did you come from? Jeez Louise!
time to end this. Dang it! You'll regret your mum ever squirting you out. Not too late to surrender. A day. Why do they not emerge? It is over. We have banished the scoundrels. Lifted oppression's yoke from their lives. Warned you it'd be like this. Fear you as much as they did the bandits now. Sorry, no fanfares and flowers. You're not in Toussaint. Ugh, it is true what folk claim. In the north, no noble deed goes unthwarted. It is time to go home. And we shall, my friend. Come, Geralt. It's time we delivered our message. Can I heal so first? So fast up. What brings you such a long way? We are to deliver Her Grace the Duchess's message in full, with all due ceremony. For tradition... Is sacred in Toussaint. All right, fine. Most honorable Geralt, slayer of monsters and all Ifels nefarious, which prey on the defenseless of this world. Whereas never have you been known to deny help to the innocent, nor leave widows and orphans to fates undeserved. Answer you now our present summons. Free us from the beast which floods our streets with blood and sows panic in the hearts of rich and poor alike. Come to our aid, Witcher. Thus humbly beseeches you the Star-Cross City's most gracious protectress, Her Illustrious Highness, Duchess Anna Henrietta. Shall you answer her call? Anna Henrietta really say all that, word for word? Well, in point of fact, she said, bring me the Witcher and dare not spare your horses. Only make certain this time he comes alone. The Ducal Chamberlain added the rest. You know how it is. <laughs> yeah, I remember. I might add, be it unofficially, that a hefty reward awaits. Yet the specifics you will need to verify with her illustrious highness. Might be the most fervent request that I take a contract ever, and the most polite. And now we've got all that behind us. I want to hear more about this beast. Some kind of monster? Just guessing. Most assuredly, though no one has caught a good look at it as yet, our only sure witnesses, the bodies massacred in a brutal, horrid manner. Look, some sketches drafted from descriptions given by those who claim they glimpsed the beast. Each quite different. To my mind, these witnesses lie. How many victims so far? Two. When Her Grace learnt of the second, she discharged us immediately to fetch you, promising grants of land and fortunes in gold, should you answer her summons. An ill wind blows, Geralt. The beast cannot be tracked. Folks say it wields black magic. Also, both victims were nobly born, and the start of a tourney draws near. Beast wields black magic? 
What makes you say so? The first victim vanished between bites at a feast. Of the feast goers, none noticed this. They saw but an open window, then heard desperate cries from the street below where a corpse had just been found. The second killing, similar. A night in a locked room. Servants all about the house, guards all around the estate. Yet the beast somehow got him out, dragged him to the town square, and killed him there. No one saw, nor hurt, a thing. We have no fear of creatures against which sword and shield protect. But of this beast, nothing is known. Safe that it cannot be traced. Kills effortlessly, and with no rhyme or reason we can discern. Anyone tried to hunt it? Knight's Errand, for example? Ha! Many have tried. Baiting, waiting in ambush, but to no avail. The beast is clever. It evades all traps and attacks of a sudden. It is like a ghost. An experienced tracker. This is what we need, with knowledge of monsters. In short, we need you. Mentioned a tourney. Why doesn't the Duchess just call it off? Simply, it is too late. The guests have arrived. The best knights of all lands, relatives of the Emperor. The beast could be a threat to others, not just to her grace's subjects. Got it. Before an aristocrat dies, at best it's a scandal. At worst, a diplomatic incident. Uh, I sometimes think back to all the contracts I've ever taken from sovereigns. Can't name hardly any where I came out ahead. You cannot be thinking to refuse. Ah, <sighs> no. Just struck by a thought. How the Duchess can sometimes be... Mm, ...demanding. So you accept the contract? Excellent! We must set off at once. We long wanted this land searching for you. Yet time is of the essence. Ready to go, soon as you're packed. Ha! Ah, then post haste to Toussaint. To Toussaint! Toussaint, the land of love and wine. Exactly how I remembered it. You will find Beauclair has changed some these past years. Walk about when you have the chance. You will see for yourself. To me, place always seems straight out of a fairy tale. Knights errant, elven palaces. You insinuate that we are somehow odd? I shall prove you wrong. This I pledge on the Heron.
Got him. Big beast. Tackling it single-handed? None too wise. Neither is love born of wisdom, Witcher. So, Guillaume, out with it. Which fair damsel inspired you to vow to kill that filth? The most beautiful among them. If he wishes to guard her name a secret, he need not reveal it. You I do not know, sir, nor seem you a knight, yet still I am profoundly grateful, nay, indebted to you for your succor. This trophy, sir, is yours. A giant this close to human settlements? Strange. Well, that was no ordinary giant. His name was Goliath. Rumored to have been a knight once, but one who broke his vows. For this, the Lady of the Lake transformed him into a wild giant and banished him into the Gorgon Hills. So he came back down? Why? Several times each year, hunger chased him into the lowlands. Goliath had killed and devoured many shepherds. Guillaume's hunt served a noble cause. At any rate, it's a tale for more agreeable environs. I'll take the trophy. Why not? Could find someone who'll pay to buy it. Put up a good fight against the giant. Got experience battling monsters? None. In Tucson, we mostly chase bandits. But I vowed I'd bring my heart's champion the head of a monstrosity, as the famed Gottfried, known as the Giant Killer, did. You don't mean to hunt the beast, I hope. The matter's best left to Geralt. Another challenge awaits me. Yet if Geralt is to hunt the beast, he ought to know. It struck again. The river surrendered a corpse. It washed up in the meander by the cockatrice. Damien de la Tour's guardsmen are there already, securing the area. Securing the area? Better go there now before they trample any tracks, manhandle any evidence. Set forth, then. I shall ride for the city to inform her gracious magnificence that Geralt has arrived. We'll meet later, near Guillaume's tent at the Tourney grounds. I shall take you then to see her grace. Eyewitnesses to gruesome monster attacks always have a hard time describing the creature in question. The beasts move quickly and often attack at night, while the witnesses are terrified and primarily concerned with fleeing for their lives. As a result, witches quite often have no inkling what creature they face until they find tracks or otherwise establish something for themselves. Such was the case with the beast tormenting Beauclair. Geralt knew it was deadly, elusive, and fiendishly clever. Everything else he heard was deep was clearly the product of imaginations fed by fear of a dangerous predator. According to legend, Goliath was, had once been a knight who violated his vows, for which he was punished by the Lady of the Lake. Transformed into a giant, he fled into the mountains and would only descend into the inhabited lowlands when hunger forced him to it. There's no knowing how much truth lies in that legend, yet it is incontrovertible incontrovertible fact that this dangerous giant gobbled up shepherds and sheep alike, and was so widely feared governesses used him to scare children into eating their vegetables. Though he came across as a wild, unthinking beast, Goliath used simple tools and any item could turn into a deadly weapon in his powerful hands. When fighting Geralt, Goliath wielded a millstone, making his every blow truly crushing. Luckily, Geralt already had some experience slaying giants, and made quick work of Goliath as well, with the much-anticipated help of three knights, Milton de Periac Perian, Palmerin de Lonfall, and Guillaume de Lonfall. Huh, Quinn.
painted world created in the mind of Iris von Everick was mainly populated by figures from her memories, but was also home to a dangerous predatory creatures, the embodiments of her fears. The most dangerous of these, the ethereal, invoked her greatest fear, and wore the face of her husband. The ethereal resembled Olgierd in appearance and also fought using a technique similar to his. A group of six such creatures lay in wait for Geralt, yet at first only one, only one engaged him in battle. This one's death awoke the next, which was more powerful than the first, and Sora went to the end, with a stronger ethereal replacing a fallen weaker brother until all were defeated. Yet Geralt had to be careful, for the slightest amount of damage dealt to a being awaiting his turn would cause him to come alive and join his still-living comrade in the fight. In the end, the best tactic against these nightmarish beings proved to be a well-timed counterattack. Ooh, blizzard. If this world has ever been known a ruler who enjoyed the absolute admiration of her subjects without the need of systematic repression or a particularly cruel hangman, it was without a doubt the sovereign of Tucson, Duchess Anna Henrietta. Called, called Anarietta by those who knew her well, she was the widow of the late lamented Duke Raymond and one-time lover of a very famous and talented artist who would prefer to remain anonymous. A few years prior, when the Witcher and a band of his friends were visiting Toussaint, Anna Henrietta had f had the pleasure of meeting Geralt of Rivia. When a mysterious beast began attacking her courtiers, the Duchess thus knew exactly whom to summon. Guillaume de Lonfall was the very model of a knight-errant, the placard boy for Toussaint, if you will. When Geralt first met the young man, he was valiantly tilling at a windmill, which, to be fair, turned out to be hiding a ferocious giant. Milton and Periac Perian was a baron of, from Toussaint and a member of Anna Henrietta's inner circle of knights. This good-humored nobleman never met an overloaded banquet table he failed to unload of its burdens, yet nor did he ever shirk a fight against heavily armed bandits or any other enemies of the duchy. Gerald had met Milton years ago, under very peculiar circumstances that deserve to be recounted properly and at length. Their roads crossed again when Milton came to the Witcher as the Duchess's envoy, to ask our hero to journey with him to Toussaint. Palmerin de Lonfall Not all knights errant in Toussaint were embodiments of virtue, but if I had to choose one among them who did personify their chivalric creed, it would be Palmerin de Lonfall. He is all the more admirable for the fact that, years ago, he was no stranger to the pleasures of eating, drinking, and making merry in a variety of fashions. With time, however, he had abandoned vice and drew closer to the knightly ideal. Geralt realized this when Palmerin came to him to, as an envoy from Anna Henrietta. The old-fashioned and somewhat naive knight immediately made a good impression on him, for while he did take formalities and courtesies a tad too seriously, he was anything but pompous or grandiose. Brave kid, Guillaume. Barbaran oversaw his upbringing. Guillaume is his kid. In Blood and Wine, you can undergo additional Witcher mutations to unlock new capabilities. Soon you will run into a messenger who will deliver a very interesting letter. Read it and investigate the story of Professor Moreau to learn more about these mutations. They say a master craftsman lives in Toussaint who can craft Witcher gear of unequaled quality. What's more, you receive special bonuses for wearing all or part of a set of this extraordinary equipment. You will not regret investigating these new options. Slow now, whoa. My crossbow reattached. Oh, this is nice. This entire game is just beautiful. No one can Can't get used to the way you knights talk, especially how you switch back and forth between flowery and, well, near normal. 
I said, in the service of her gracious magnificence, when we appear in her name or speak on her behalf, we are bound by tradition. Perfect choice in. Well, I should check the map. What's it like? Places where you can begin new quests from blood and wine are marked with the red exclamation. Oh man, it's like an. Oh boy. We got more notice boards. Oh boy. We're gonna be doing a lot of side questing, it looks like. Thing about it, there weren't really that many side quests in Hearts of Stone. Either that or I didn't find any. This is like an entirely new region though, so it makes sense. No one here. They must have removed the body already. Let's look around. Make sure they didn't miss anything. Hobnailed boots, multiple sets of prints. Ducal guard, clearly. Let's see where they went. Walked along the shoreline. Perhaps the body lay on the bank. I hear drowners. Anything taken by the current ends up in these shallows. Yes, the stench is fierce. Got guests, several. Explosion too. Uh, it was my fault. I should have healed. I should have meditated. Meditate. There we go. Hobnailed boots, multiple sets of prints. Ducal guard, clearly. Let's see where they went. Walked along the shoreline. Perhaps the body lay on the bank.
Got guests. Careful. He exploded, that's why. Oh, geez, they spike. Jeez. Here by the smell of blood. Let's keep looking. Nope, wrong one. Oh, it's just a pile of rotten meat till it started to move. Scurvers are rot fiends' larger cousins. The bodies of these hideous, vaguely humanoid creatures are covered with rotten scraps of flesh, under which lurk even more rotten muscles stretched along a strong, flexible skeleton. Scurvers, which feed on old, rotting corpses, prefer to make their hunting grounds in abandoned torture sites, forgotten graveyards, and old battlefields. They're very aggressive, and, though they feed on corpses, if they come across a living person, they are likely to attack. Thus, when wandering near any of the above-mentioned places, one must be especially cautious. Scurvers usually feed underground, but sometimes when they catch the scent of a human, they crawl to the surface in a matter of seconds and attack their potential prey. When fighting them, one cannot afford to forget about their special bony spines, razor-sharp pro protuberances sticking out, sticking out, from their skeletons. When a scurver is near death, the gases and enzymes gathered within its body cause it to explode, flinging these spines out at great speed, turning them into one last deadly weapon in their arsenal. To protect oneself against damage from these spines, one should make prodigious use of the Quen. Good to know. Anything taken by the current ends up in these shallows. Yes, the stench is fierce. Jump the king down the river. We must keep searching. I should heal again. Been two hours and we've barely gone anywhere, Geralt. Only blood soaked scraps left of the victim's clothing. Good quality cloth. A wealthy victim, correct? Looks it. Blood. Guardsmen pulled these nets out of the water, then cut the mutilated body free. Gonna dive in, make sure they didn't miss anything. Accessory clearly. Need to comb the bank. DLC. Huh. Was launched here. Guardsmen must have loaded the body parts onto it, taken them somewhere. 
Need to find out where. I'd like to look at the corpse before it starts to decompose. The inn. Its patrons must have seen the guardsmen. Which direction they took. We should ask there. Seems we've got ourselves an audience. You think this surprising? The locals will tell the children of children they do not have yet. Of the day a quartered corpse was pulled from the river. One thing. Found a handkerchief in the water. Monogrammed DLC. Mean anything to you? Delacroix? It cannot be. Was it he the beast slew? Seems so. Knew him well? Long past. We were close friends once, but our paths diverged. He was a man of extremes, standing by his companions, no matter the odds, fighting his foes to the bitter end. Foes? He have a lot of them? He did, but I do not see what that has to do with the beast. Ah, Geralt, you've struck a raw nerve. Memories of a time long past, to which I'd rather not return now. I understand. We can talk later. Let's go to the tavern. I shall have to leave you soon. Return to court. Barely got back to Tucson. A knight in the service of her illustrious highness knows no rest. In fact, I'd feared I would return too late to fulfill my duty. Yet it seems I've arrived in the nick of time. Walk there. Okay. Thought you were gonna get on your horse. It's just up the hill. Once you have finished examining the corpse, be sure to report to Anarietta. Anarietta? Her Grace, the Duchess. I forget myself at times. We address each other by our first names in private. Never in Pomrin's presence, however. He finds such familiarity offensive. A watering hole for traders, smugglers, boatmen. But you will find no better crayfish chowder in all Tucson. Good to know. Nose board first. I hereby declare that William of Stratford steals rhymes, pro prostitutes his services for pennies, and smells of weak old fish pricks. I cordially wish him the clap, ringworm, and warts within his bum's ample crevasse. Crevasse. Take that, the papillon. The Witcher Geralt of Rivia, known as the White Wolf, is wanted in to serve as a guide. His potential employer guarantees an ample wage for this unusual contract. For more information, he should go to Count Belladal's temporary base camp in Tucson. The Count requests all other persons not present themselves at said camp under the pretense of being Geralt of Rivia. Count Belladal was not born yesterday and can easily tell who is a witcher and who is faking it. All those journeying to his camp in shabby costumes with wooden swords strapped to their backs can save themselves the trouble and turn back. Calling all knights, errant, and other strong men. The duchy needs you. Your aid is required. Bounteous rewards are in the offing. More details available at the Ducal Camerlengo's, off Camerlengo's office on Knights Dormant Street. The Office of Internal Revenue hereby announces a limited live auction to be held regarding the sale of a piece of developed real estate and accompanying agricultural land located in the Caroberta Woods region having been left to the ducal treasury by the late Count Cripsy, who departed this world without any heirs. Due to the unique nature of the Belgard estate and its important role in the production of wine bringing great fame to the duchy and all corners of the world, only subjects of the duchy of Toussaint shall be allowed to participate in the auction. To all knights errant and other such men of arms, be it known far and wide that the services of voluntary keepers of the peace shall be needed. 
Minor problems are expected to arise during the transfer of the above-mentioned real estate, and said problems, for their dissolution, could require the application of direct physical force. All volunteers are asked to report to the field office on the Pro Procurator General in Tucson near Plagun Plagman's Bridge, that is to say, to the place where the auction shall be held. The Great Beauclair Gwent Tournament It's Count Monier's superior delight to announce a Gwent Tournament of his organization. Those wishing to take part should register at the Pheasantry. Please note this tournament features a new faction developed by Count Monier himself. Let the games begin. Oh boy. To a Witcher or Witchers. The Beauclair Cooper's Guild is seeking an individual or individuals willing to escort a merchant convoy through an area threatened by the Great White Terror. More information can be obtained from Gaston Legaf at the merchant's camp in the forest to the north of Coronata vi Vineyard. Margrim Polan, Undersecretary for Threats and Risk Management, Beauclair Cooper's Guild. Ducal clerks looking for help. Could be good coin to be made. Of late, as is often the case during tourney season, the incident of diseases afflicting the nether regions has increased. I can offer an ornament that will soothe all such unfortunate itchings. By decision of the Grand Master of the Hunt, all members of the Hunter's Union are hereby called upon to cull the numbers of Artucci's woodland predators. As specified in the relevant decrees, hunters shall be richly rewarded for presenting ears taken from the wolves and bears which have spread like vermin across the Sans Retour Marsh. Come a mess, leave well dressed, you'll see I'm the bleeding best. The boot black of the port. Every journey begins with a first step. Take it at the cockatrice. In light of Minister Tremblay's increased daft order barring entry to the prison grounds, I'd like to let it be known that I'll gladly purchase an entry permit if someone's got one to sell. I'm not a member of any inmate's family, for it's my beau who's in the prison, and has been for half a year now, during which time we haven't been able to see each other as often as we need to. If you've ever had a beau, you know what I mean. Lots of stuff. The butcher of Blubber called to be the savior of Tucson. To everything, turn, turn, turn. There is a season. Ooh. So it begins. By my troth, could that be the musty scent of fresh pate? Naught else, Sir de Peyrac Peyron. I see time has not dulled your senses. We would be honored if you would join us. Uh, your companion as well. But why do I not detect even a whiff of crayfish chowder? No soup today, on account of there being no crayfish. I reckon you've not heard, but all I caught was a corpse. I awoke at the crack of dawn, as I do each day, but when I looked up, I beheld a blood-red sky. This corpse is precisely why we're here. For the man whom you've invited to join you at the table was summoned from a far-off land by her gracious magnificence. He is tasked with tracking and killing the beast. We invited two men to join us, yet since Sir de Peyrac Peyron in temperament is more akin to hare than hound, I surmise the other is the hunter. With whom do we have the pleasure? Name's Geralt. A humble introduction. You've clearly not tarried long with Sir de Peyrac Peyron. Spare us the petty insults. Geralt is a master of the witchering trade. He has questions concerning the beast's last victim. I was the one to find the corpse. The sun had just risen when I awoke, 
sat straight up in my bed, looked out the window, and beheld a sky red as blood. Ask her, please, or we shall be here till winter. Must have been early in the morning. Went to check your nets and then... I stepped out of my hut and saw... By my troth, to the point, man. You found a body ensnared in your crayfish nets. We know this already. What happened then? Did you see anyone nearby? Did you spy anything noteworthy? Anything at all? Not a soul around, just me. As for noteworthy... Mm, well... What did you see? But be warned. If I hear the sky was red again... I saw... A head bobbing, eyes bulging, the tongue blew and popped out. Next to it, a hand rocking upon the water. Get a good look at the body parts? They gave me such a fright! I bolted to town, fast as my legs would take me, then returned with guardsmen, who told me to keep out of their way. They had a hard haul. The parts were so tangled up in my nets, they were forced to cut them. Need to examine the body. Know where they took it? They ferried it across, then loaded it on a cart and hauled it to a cellar at Corfo Bianco to keep it cool, see? What? Why, Corfo Bianco is Baron Rassel's estate. When he learns they've turned his cellar into a morgue, he'll set his house on them. While you were gallivanting about the north, his vineyard was auctioned off. Who was that? Woman who just left. Didn't see her before. Didn't notice her walk in, either. Doubtless Linnis, the innkeep's daughter. But hold, Geralt, because this is an outrage. Rossell's vineyard was auctioned off? Inconceivable! It is no secret the Baron had gambling debts up to his ears. It finally came time to collect. His creditors auctioned off his property. The Ducal Chancellery bought it, in fact. Russell now bunks with his brother in Vicar Faro. I told Russell he'd get his comeuppance. How long can one draw on past heroics? His creditors must finally have defined that his promises meant nothing. Such are the times. Today's knights are pale shadows of the heroes of yore. It's true what they say. God sent the beast to punish us for straying from the old paths. So folk think the beast's divine punishment. Knights have turned their backs on the old customs. Where they were defenders of the duchy, they're now defenders of their own touches. Why, you insolent. Let him talk. The duchess trades in titles, grants honors to ill to us. We've strayed from the path of virtue, lost the gods' favor, so the gods sent retribution. Don't listen to that nonsense, girl. It's rehashed street preacher Codsworth. Yes, the rebel rousers have been sprouting up like weeds lately, each offering the same bill of goods. They say anything else about the beast, besides it being a messenger of the gods? The two Saintois are no fools. They see clearly the beast kills on days honoring patron saints. Picky monster. Thanks for the hospitality. Time I examined the corpse. Corvo Bianco lies a short way from here, near the tawny grounds. Just follow the road and you'll arrive. Not coming with? <laughs> oh yeah, duty of some sort calls. Some sort? <laughs> Her grace bestowed a great honor on me, even before we departed for Velen. I'm to play the hare during this year's game in the palace gardens. When you see me in my costume, you will wet yourself laughing. A little tempted to ask a few questions, but it sounds like a long, complicated story. One involving lengthy digressions into local history and tradition. So, see you later, Milton, and good luck. We're definitely going to see this, right? <laughs> The last day of the tourney had come and it was now clear Godfrey was, was tilled against the mysterious chessboard knight in the joust. Godfrey was the ducal champion at the time, so all were counting on his victory. 
No one knew a thing about the chessboard knight except that he had come from the south in dark armor and had a shield bearing 64 black and white squares. When the herald trumpeted the signal, the knights charged at each other. Gottfried's lance shattered against the chessboard knight's shield, and the mysterious knight swayed in his saddle. No mere mortal could have survived such a blow. But the chessboard knight did not fall from his horse, but instead struck a blow of his own on the next pass, knocking Gottfried onto the ground. Victor approached his defeated foe, stuck out his hand, and helped him stand. Before the herald could announce his victory, he took off his helm and all beheld his eyes of coal and face of burnt cinders. I have come from a time long past to remind you of humility, which is a long forgotten virtue. My name was consumed by dragon fire when I perished, victim of my own pride. After saying these words, the chessboard knight rode off. No one stopped him, but they repeat his warning to this day. Most honorable Geralt, slayer of monsters and all evils and nefarious which prey on the defenseless of this world. Whereas never have you been known to deny help to the innocent, nor leave widows and orphans to fates undeserved, enter you now our present summons. Free us from the beast which floods our streets with blood and sows panicked in the hearts of rich and poor alike. Come to our aid, Witcher. Thus humbly beseeches you the star-crossed city's most gracious protectress, her illustrious highness, Duchess Anna Henrietta. Dear fellow Gwent lovers, I'm to present myself. Count Monimir, the, the organizer of this Gwent tournament. As you most probably know, I have introduced a new faction to our beloved game, Skellige. I'm convinced this step shall add variety to our pastime, for the perfection, for perfecting its perfection. I shall be delighted if you choose to play this faction during our event. Good luck and good Gwent to you all. It's me. Okay, let's check the quests. What do we got? Go to Corvo Bianco. Go to the place where the auction was held. Gerald found the appeal of a ducal clerk. The clerk was seeking all manners of vagabonds, knights, errant, and mercenaries. The person did not seem to be an offer of witch's work. Even so, Gerald decided to learn more about this mysterious job. Gerald came across altogether typical looking notice someone was looking for the help of knights or other strong men he concluded he met the above state of requirement and set out for knight's dormant square one day gail came across a notice board with information about a quint tournament organized by count monier and to be held at the pheasantry the witcher as everyone knew was not one to turn down a bit of card playing so he decided to join the event little did he know what surprises awaited him there while wandering around Toussaint, Geralt did not neglect his vocation and the true core of his existence, namely pursuing and slaying monsters. Having found a notice on a notice board, posted by a merchant guild beset by some beast, the witcher decided to go to the appointed spot to learn about the details of the matter. This does not have a level. Hmm... Where are you at? Down here. I guess we could check it out. But we'll be doing that next time, because this is probably a good place to stop for now. That is a pretty mountain. Man, that's a beautiful sky. Witcher, please, sir, find that beast. I will, madam. Don't worry. Geralt of Rivia is here to help. Actually, you don't even believe that. Look, that's one new. Slow, that's one gratitude. 